Mark Kennedy, Lincoln City head coach, with us pitch side and atmosphere. A really good point tonight. An outstanding point, yeah. Uh, we've had some amazing draws this year, and I mean that in a good way. When I think of uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Plymouth, we're outstanding. Ipswich, outstanding. Bolton, down to 10 men. Ipswich, down to 10 men. Um, that was as good as any, if not better, actually. You've talked in the last few weeks about wanting to, to press higher up the pitch, and that certainly was the, the tactic from the off today. Where did you, why did you feel that was the right way to go about it here in Derby? Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not trying to be a smarty pants. We, we, we wanted to come here tonight. Uh, you know, we, we were always going to show Derby the, the respect they deserve. Um, and we, we talked about playing in mid block, but we talk about specific triggers of when to press and how to press. We've been doing it for eight months, and I think when the opportunity presented itself tonight, our players are really, really good, the front three, at making those decisions. Um, I was just probably a little bit disappointed when the game started because we're in 30 seconds. I think Ben puts himself in a good position where I'm expecting him to go on and, and shoot. He's, he, he needs to, he's, he's too selfless, Ben. He needs to be more selfish. Uh, Mead had a good opportunity within the first 10 minutes. So um, I think we're very good at pressing if you give us the opportunity to press. Derby play a lovely, fluent, fluid style of football, so um, I knew we'd have good counter-pressing moments tonight. And when the goal comes, it must please you as a manager, as a head coach, when players are running in and, and making the most of a, a goalkeeper spilling the ball? Uh, yeah, I think we got a... Um, we, have, we, we obviously got a little bit of luck and we, we actually exposed ourselves for the set-piece and we... On one hand, we got lucky, but it was an incredible interception by... Uh, by Lewis and then he gets a shot off. Look, Mayday's offside, that's the bottom line. Uh, there's two really poor decisions by the officials tonight. Both goals were miles offside. Um, what really made me angry is that... Uh, uh, listen, they both made mistakes, but you just know in the second half something's going to happen. And I'm not insinuating in any shape, way, shape or form the officials evened it up. They didn't. I don't, they're great, honest people. But we, you can't be making mistakes like that at this level. Um, you know, really, I, I'm really, really annoyed with that tonight. Is that hard to take when it's not just, you know, it's just a mistake for one team and these things happen? But the fact it was two clear errors for the two big moments in the game. Yeah, look, errors was miles offside. What really made me angry was when they scored, I looked straight down at a linesman and he pointed at our player to say, you're keeping them on. And Connor's miles offside. That, that's just not good enough. As for the red card, any complaints on the two bookings? Um, I asked Ben, uh, and he said they were both yellow, so uh, I thought the second one was definitely yellow. I, I can't, honestly, I can't, that much happened, I've got a cracking headache. I can't remember the first one, but I do remember thinking it was harsh, but I, I could be wrong, I haven't seen that again. I asked Ben, and he thought they were two yellows. As you say, since you've been here, you've worked on your defensive shape, and in the last 20 minutes, last half an hour, it really came to the fore, didn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, we've put hours and hours and hours of work into it, and the players have to take a huge, they have to take all the credit, because we have different players playing in different positions, uh, Max got on early, Last come on early, we, I mean, I've never practised 5-3-1, ever, and I hopefully never have to practise it again, and in the end, we just went 5-4. I've never practiced that, so uh, the instructions of our principals, we give the players, we work really hard on it, and they just deserve all the credit. Um, I just did an interview with Sky there, and I've been in football for 20 years, the best group I've ever worked with in terms of their, their professionalism, the desire, the willingness to improve, and their willingness to give their all for the club, and um, I've never met a more selfless group of people, and that, that's as a squad collectively. And I've said, you know, I heard some of the comments what Derby fans were saying about your side. I'm sure you had some comments coming at you about you were bad as a non-league side about everything going on. But I guess that's music to your ears, isn't it? Um, it's all fun and games. It's just it's an emotional game. Derby want to win. Uh, fans want to win. I get it. I'm, I'm not offended. Uh, I'm very proud of a team. I'm very proud of a style. I'm very proud of a quality. I'm very proud of the club to be the head coach of this group and of our club. And. Um, and I think anybody who's watched us this year will say we're a very good side, and uh, that's just fans. I mean, I told one of the fans behind the bus that I had a better left foot than Conor Hura, and he just wasn't having it. <laughs> so we fell out about that as well. Um, the Lincoln fans will probably be heading their way back down the A46 right now, and it, 
a really good night for them as well, isn't it? And to, they urged you over the line, especially in that final 10 minutes or nine minutes of added time. Phenomenal, and that you know we we do our bit and we do what we can, but we wouldn't have got through the game without them. It was incredible, and. Um, I referenced the Peterborough game this year it was a unique experience for me. See so such a huge following and to hear them singing and that, but that was just that was amazing for me tonight watching that. Um, incredible, uh, so happy, we're so grateful, and it's not just tonight. It's every week, it's week in, week out. Uh, we've had some poor performances this year, undoubtedly, and they just constantly get behind us. And it's easy for me when we've got fans that keep on following us through thick and thin and come out on their numbers that our team talk was simple tonight it was just all about the fans and it's just a pleasure to see the connection between the group the players the staff the fans it's a really united connected club and uh, I'm, we're actually disappointed they've not walked away with three points so you know a huge thank you from what we don't get to say it very often but a huge thank you on behalf of all the players as well because I'm, I'm obviously come out and talk about it but trust me the players are incredibly grateful of what we get week in week out but just one player missing tonight, Danny Mandroyo, what was the, the situation there? Simple, every game I pick a team and a squad that I think will uh, will get us the best results and uh, and and, I, and that's what I did, so unfortunately Danny missed out, I think on Saturday Max missed out, Tasha and Oakley Boo, who's outstanding every day in training, um, comes in, trains like a monster every day, unfortunately with, uh, with not unfor unfortunately for Tash with five loans, so whatever game we play we pick a team and a squad that we think will get the points and it was it was just simply down to coach's decision. I know sometimes I know I sometimes have the football insomnia on a Tuesday night when you get back after a, a gate great game like tonight. You said you got a cracking headache. Will it be an easy one to sleep tonight or, or will you be replaying it over again with all the adrenaline going? It will after the three paracetamol I've had. <laughs> um, now win lose a draw it's an emotional game. Um, just looking forward to going home and seeing my wife and kids and having a day with them tomorrow.